We caught wind of some interesting activity going on at a restaurant called Cypress Cafe, which is located in the 1905 City Hall of the beautiful city of Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. I contacted the owner, Holly Lamoni Raymond, and she invited us down to do an investigation. So, the GCOM team packed their bags and headed for the Mississippi Gulf Coast. After arriving, we met with Holly, then we headed back to the trailer to get our equipment. But we never seemed to really stay focused for very long. Hey, is that the new tripod from Best Buy? The new one. Did you get the good one? About time. I've been ready to eat. Good lord. Shortly after we finished eating, we interviewed an employee of the Cypress Cafe who had some interesting experiences to share with us. After the interview with Kayla, the guys went to check out another location close by that we heard of from some of the locals. People claimed to see odd lights, mist, and shadows coming from this graveyard. We are at the Diamond Head Inn and Sweets. I'm tired, I need a nap. Film ish. Shoot it. <laughs> get my get fiddle out of the back, you know. Yup. Oh, it's way over there. Ah, gotta get the get fiddle. Josh decided he would harmonize us all to sleep. When we woke up, it was time to hit the road again to go back to Cypress Cafe for our investigation. Tom has some something small. I can't eat. They're so good. They should have picked out a better name for those things. <laughs> no, they should. Master Blast. <laughs> Master Blast. Perfect Master fine. Blaster. Perfect fine. They got a headache. Need something sweet. Sonic should be near. <laughs> I can sense it. I can sense it. Dude, we gotta really find something sweet like that. <laughs> I think there ain't nothing sweet except for that double. Sadly, Scott never found his master blast. 
Myself and Joe arrived to Cypress Cafe shortly after the others. You're a genius, so. It's so much easier for me to just pull it in. Just back it. up, dude. We're, we're going oh to head out God. anyway to get something to You drink. know it's illegal to park <laughs> this way, right? I'm fully aware of that. Highly illegal. Is it? Thunk, thunk, thunk. Way to go, Turbo. Now, it was time for us to start setting up for our investigation. Josh and Caleb with cameraman Scott lead off the investigation inside the cafe. The first thing they do is try to establish a line of communication with whatever may be in the building. Once they've done that, they can start to figure out what exactly they may be in contact with. Start on the dashboard, move by the gallery, or you can turn. I'll try to establish a line of communication with you, and then we will ask questions. So, items have that flashlight just turned on. Yeah, I see it reflected on the wall. Have you chosen the flashlight over by the jet cell? Go around this way. Can you turn that flashlight off. Come again. Can you turn it? Thank you. Come on now, we know uh, we know somebody's in here. Well, that young lady was telling us about. You scared her about throwing stuff. We'd like to try to prove that you're actually here. So, back to the flashlight. If you can, if you can hear us, just a quick on. You can keep it on or flip, but it has to come on all the way. With no responses from the jail cell flashlight, they decide to move back to the dining area where Caleb begins using the Gauss meter, which measures electromagnetic fields of energy. Yeah. No, that's Caleb. During the day, we established that the entire property has a natural EMF field that reads around a 0.5 to a 0.7 constantly. This could explain both the being watched feeling that some people who are sensitive to EMF can feel and the energy that fuels the activity here. It's just right there. Yeah. Are you standing right here? That camera may be putting off top of my back. Yeah, okay. Josh and Caleb discovered that the security camera inside the cafe puts off a strong EMF field. This may explain the creepy feeling that some people get, as well as what may be fueling some of the activity in the building. Um, anyway, so any of the uh, cellmates that used to be here, possibly, oh, I don't know, I'll wait. <laughs> Maybe, uh, maybe someone who was hanged, maybe some of the, I guess, prisoners, I'm trying to figure out who's here. Whoa. Okay. Can you do that again? After several minutes of no interaction, the guys decide to whip out the PSB7 Spirit Box. This is a modified radio that sweeps through radio stations extremely fast, creating white noise, which is a way for spirits to communicate. This is when things begin to heat up. Now what we're about to do may scare you, may frighten you. It's going to be loud. It's going to be loud. It may upset you a little bit, but uh... It's just another means of communication we're trying to get with you. You can talk within the white noise of this thing. Feel free to do so. Just 
Just trying to figure guys, out. Guys, huh? guys, I'm just stepping back in here. Are you serious? Yes. Oh wow. Well. Things not charged. No. This is dead. Yeah. Well, did you take batteries off? No, hey, hey, dude. Huh? Woo! Trouble. Get you? What? Mm. Something get you? What's going on? What's up, bro? Uh, I still. Talk to me. What's going on? Oh, Are you alright? I feel it, dude. I, I feel it. Big. My face is getting goosebumps. It came up and did this. Come back and I mean, they probably got me on camera doing this. Right behind me. If you just touch Scott's ear, can you say something to us? Immediately after Scott says something was tugging on his ear, we catch this incredible ball of light shooting between Caleb and Josh towards the camera. What makes this legitimate is that we have an anomaly, along with a physical experience. This is not dust, as you can see it seems to travel intelligently. This also is not a bug since it flashes and does not flutter like an insect would. What's better is, this is the only anomaly we have captured up to this point. If you want to talk to us, let us know. It said Pritchett. No, it didn't. Yes, it said Pritchett. A female voice comes through that says my last name, Pritchett. Let us know. Here it is again in slow motion. The same female voice comes through again. This time, she seems to be saying help. Here it is slowed down. Are you over there by that flashlight right now? Help? Oh! <laughs> Hey, did it get you? The again? right one. Huh? The right one this time. Scott's ear gets pulled again, but this time, the same female spirit warned us before it happened. A female voice comes through and says, Beware, just before Scott's ear gets pulled. Because of this warning, and the nature of the experiences so far, we begin to question if this female is the only spirit in the building. Here's the camera. Here's the camera. Now look, you messing with Scott right now? You need to be a little bit more clear. Was that a yes or a no? Can you tell us what day it is? You know that you know the feeling when you uh you got a little bit of water on your hands? Mm -hmm. And you gotta plug in something that's a little that look that was what Kind of zap my back of my ear. <laughs> well, electricity. <laughs> this one felt just felt like. Somebody <coughs> messed me up. That, that was. We'll be back. <laughs> oh, we, we, we. Ah, what I do with the? Uh, oh, What'd you leave? Hey. What? Oh, what? Mm, Brake squealing, I guess. You say, dude, like I'm mongoose. You okay, Hilbert? Fuck! Alright, go ahead and After Team 1 finished up with their investigation, I decided to go on a solo hunt. Think they may have heard my last name. Go in and see what's going on. What's up? My name's Justin. You've been in here hanging out with my buddies. Said they might have heard you.
that you are here walking around, you need to come up to me here in a second. I'm going to cut on the spirit box, okay? Is there anyone in here with me right now? Having no luck with the spirit box, I decided to turn to the digital voice recorder to see if I could capture an EVP, better known as a spirit voice. Starting EVP session. Starting EVP session. Justin, uh, subtle investigation. If there's anyone in here, please come speak to me. Justin, moving on chair. Not really doing much. Were you a prisoner here? Or were you a policeman? After about 30 minutes of no interaction of any kind, Joe comes inside to man the camera. What's up, Joe? What's up? Hey, right where you're sitting at? Yeah. Right across from you, they just picked up where the spirit box said, help me, and it says clear today. Really? Yes. It says, help me, woman's voice. Like right in front of me? Yeah. Are you, are you here to be camera? Yeah. Right there. I mean, you got the best on them, so. Yeah, that'd be, that's fine, man. Is Jacob here? Yeah. Cool. Uh, no, Joe, you're walking into the, uh, into the location. I've been seeing that flashlight keeps coming on and off, but it's not doing anything. Doing on the spirit box, we're gonna, we're gonna try this again and see how it works. loud, right? Yeah, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. What's your name? Is there anyone in here with me right now? Why are you still in here? I finally make contact when we captured this female voice on the camera's audio. Why are you still in here? She appears to be saying help. This backs up what the guys captured earlier. Why are you still- Also, Joe, nor myself heard this voice with our own ears. Alright, I got a better one. I want the big bad dude who throws mason jars around to come talk to me. He said, hey. The first spirit box voice comes through and it's a man saying, hey. Alright, I got a better one. I want the big bad dude who throws mason jars around to come talk to me. He said, hey. This also validates what the guys captured earlier. Alright, I got a better one. I want the big bad dude who throws mason jars around to come talk to me. Said, hey. Things were starting to come alive and evidence of more than one spirit was beginning to mount. We've heard a rumor, we don't know if it's true or not. The tree behind me that has the podium, the steps to go around it. Did people used to get hung from that tree? They used to hang people and execute them from that tree? Yes or no? Clear. You yeah. heard that, Joe? Yeah. You want? Have you tried a spirit box in the jail cell? Not yet. Fix it too, though. I mean, we're going to. We still got a, still got a ways to go tonight. All right. I'm going to end this DVP session right here, and we're going to do a first DVP session to see how it works. Why the other one down there? What'd you hear? Female voice. I've been hearing female's voice for a little bit, but it's real, real faint. Like, yeah. sounds like it's way off in the distance. Yeah, really, really faint. I can't tell if it's down the road. I can't tell if it came from in here or not. As a matter of fact, I can't even tell you which direction it comes from. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, just kind of like it was in my head. It hurt. 
Us hearing this faint child's voice validates the EVP we unknowingly captured on the camera earlier in the investigation. Are you a little girl? Say it. I'm not paying attention to your little light over there. I can't, I can't talk to you with it. You won't talk with it. You just keep flickering it on and off. That's not what works for me. Alright? Okay, what I can do though, I can set this one up for you. That's cool. Cut it out. Thank you. We finally get our very first intelligent interaction with the flashlight. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, are you catching this? Yeah, I'm gonna get a better angle. My cameraman's gonna come over here and try to see if we can document this, okay? Okay. If you're a woman, a little girl, a female, anything like that. If you're not a boy, if you're a female, a little girl, a boy, you know, if you're a little girl, a woman, Cut this light on for me. This one right here by me. You're a female. Cut this light on. Awesome. You know what's cool about that? That validates when we can hear it. Mm -hmm. All we've caught this entire time in female voices. Has it not? Yes. Isn't that what the other team talked to? Yes. Thanks. Female voice saying help me. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Using this flashlight, we were able to validate everything that we have heard up to this point. I think I can feel you. It's really cold right here. That's okay. If you're scared, you can come clo uh, get close to me. Okay. If you're a little girl, will you please cut this light on for me? If you are a little girl, will you please cut this light on for me? Oh, almost. Is that all the power you have? Oh, you're trying. I think you're a little girl. Joe, would you classify that? Mm. You need, need, need a little better? Yeah. I'm thinking I need something a little better. Sweetheart, oh. Look at you. Thank you so much, sweetheart. You're a little girl. Are you the one that said help me on with my other team in here? The other team was in here and they, they were using the spirit box that we have here. And they said that you said help me. Is that you? Do you need help? Baby, if you need help, will you cut the light on please and tell me? That's really sad. I'm sorry you need help. Please, cut that light off. Thank you. I have another very important question for me, okay? Sweetie, your little girl. I imagine it's very lonely. It's very lonely here. And uh, I'm a very, I'm a nice person, okay? I have a little boy of my own, he's, he's eight weeks old. And my wife, she's, she's very pretty, she's very lovely. You, you saw her today, I'm sure, if you were here when we were. Uh, I'm sure you want a friend because of how lonely it is here. Do you want to be my friend? Do you want me to be your friend? If so, will you cut that light on? If you want a friend, You want one of us to be your friend? I consider you my friend. But do you want to be mine? Do you want to be ours? If you do, will you put that light on for me? Made a friend, Joe. Yay! Made a friend. I'm gonna take my flashlight. Thank you, baby. I'm gonna come back in here and talk to you later, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you, the camera, for the skeptics. All right. You've been sitting here watching this this flashlight. Come on over here, Joe. 
Whatever, look, look, keep your eye on this flashlight, alright? Same flashlight. This is the same flashlight we've been using. Check this out. It's a twist light. Alright? Just your standard mag light. If I can get this back off. Alright, so look, standard mag light. Alright? Look. Batteries. No switch, no nothing. The only thing that turns this uh, flashlight on and off is if you twist it. It's got to have batteries. There's no remote control. There's no nothing. This thing turns off and on by twisting this cap. Just like that. Don't tell me this is fake. It's not. I made me a little friend here tonight. I'm going to send the rest of the team back in here. We're going to go outside. We're going to swap it up. I'm going to leave the spirit box, the speaker, and all that stuff in here. Let's, uh, let's go outside. Let's regroup with the guys. So, I just had, so I just had me a conversation. All right, check this out, guys. Yes. I want to, want to know why you were doing this number and why Caleb could hear you. I can hear you from out here. Were you hollering? Yeah, spirit box is on. Oh, okay. All right. Y'all yeah, will probably watch it. This flashlight was this close to me. Did not come on and off unless I asked a question. The little girl, she needs help. That's all we've been getting. Over. Listen to this. Help, little girl. She right. needs help. All right. Coming off and on, I asked if it was a male. Nothing. Female comes on. It's okay. Are you an older female? Nothing. Are you a younger female? You're a little girl. Comes on. All right. Started asking a bunch of questions. She only wants to be my friend. Your friend? She only wants to talk to me. Well, she considers, how do you know? She considers me a friend. She doesn't want anybody else to be a friend. Did you just actually me. just with my ears? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you gotta watch that video. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, uh, I asked her that. I asked her if she was gonna be sweet to you guys. She's come in and said, <laughs> Who she needs is messing with my me. ear? <laughs> <laughs> she, need, she needs help. And I, uh, I took the digital voice recorder. I need to go get that digital. Joe, go in there and get that digital voice recorder real quick. You want to get recorded? Yeah. And dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 Mission complete. After my solo investigation, myself and Joe swapped places. Scott took over the camera. We'll cut it off. You'll put it somewhere else over here in this corner. Joe tries to investigate by himself inside the jail cell, but doesn't have any luck. No, walking. With Joe having no luck in the restaurant, him and Caleb head upstairs to the second level of the building while myself and Josh head for the graveyard down the road. After telling whatever is in the room with them to do something to catch their attention, Caleb claims that his chair moved. 
We can only document this as a personal experience, since no other evidence was captured to support this. However, moving objects in this room would later become a common theme. While Caleb and Joe continued their investigation upstairs, myself and Josh checked out the graveyard we heard about from the locals during our daytime visit. Must be an electrical current of some kind going through. But it's gone now. <laughs> Freaked me out. I'm like, hey, what's no, chasing no, no. me? Oh, come, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Yeah. That's weird. Mm hmm. Just had the gals meter go off in your pocket. If there's anyone here with us, will you please talk? Talk to me through this red light. Okay, we need to go over there. Yeah? Because I thought what I was looking at was a grave. Apparently it's not because it's gone. We need well, to go over go. there. We need to go over there. It was right here. And I swear it was about this tall. I thought it was a real tall one. And then all of a sudden, I look back over here, it's gone. So. What I just saw matches what the locals claim to see here. Unfortunately, we were unable to capture it, so we cannot claim this to be evidence. Talk to us through this device, please. I really don't feel a thing out here. Mm mm. Alright, let's go back to the chair. Alright, let's put chicken. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> chicken, Josh. <sighs> this is what he's referring to. When it gets to the point where you can feel it, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. When I get to where I can feel it, I'm done. Man, it's a rush just standing here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Got that okay? Yeah. What happened? Uh, something yanked my chair. After we regrouped, it was time for myself and Jacob to team up and head inside the Cypress Cafe. Hey, sweet. It's me. Don't be afraid. It's okay. I want to come talk to you, okay? I promised you that I would come back in here. Here I am. We're going to turn on this, uh, the spirit box, okay? You didn't talk to me much with it last time. I want you to talk to me with it this time, okay? It's easier than that flashlight. It doesn't take as long, and you can make words out. Sweet girl, are you in here right now with me? We captured this direct female voice on our spirit box. We believe she is saying hello, but before that, I hear a strange whistling sound. Sweet girl, are you in here right now with me? Here's the female voice slowed down. Established that you're, you're my friend now, so you can talk to me, okay? Sweetie, are you are you happy that we're here talking to you? 
We captured the same direct female voice. She appears to be saying yes. That's good, I'm glad. Are you happy that everybody in the group here is talking to you, or are you happy that it's just me? Sweetie, I have a question, okay? Are you the one that threw those that threw those glasses down from the shelf? We continued our investigation, but had no further contact. Jacob swapped with Josh and Caleb. We went upstairs to see if we could make contact with any other spirit that may be in the building. No, we've already turned it off. Justin, come sit in the chair. Let me show you, show you what it did. Thanks, sir. It's going to be bad. Yeah. After several minutes of no luck, I decided to start using some provocation to try to get a reaction. You suck. <coughs> like for real. Sure we're talking away when it's me and Joe. Did you do that? No. <laughs> well, I got my reaction. You can see the flashlight fall straight off the table. Sure we're talking away when it's me and Joe. It doesn't roll, nor do I push it. This flashlight clearly sides straight to the edge of the table and falls. We cannot explain this in any way, and since I was taunting the spirit or entity to do something, we classify this as a great piece of evidence. Sure we're talking away when it's me and Joe. Did you do that? No. <laughs> was that the flashlight? Yeah. I think it just, they didn't even roll, it just fell off. I, I'd have to look at the video because the numbers are in the way here, but it was in the frame. <coughs> Won't you, uh, let's, let's take a look at that. Hey, you got an idea. I'm going to put this back in for you. Well, I put it up here for a reason. <laughs> no, it didn't even roll, it just knocked off. It means it fell off. Is this just going to roll itself onto the table at that point? Can't get the down. Some bitch ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Come do it again. She's like You scared me. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both at the exact same time. <laughs> Fine, if you won't do it. Yeah, that's right. You pick up that flashlight. He, he did it just, just to make it. <laughs> I mean, I'll throw it down the hallway. And if you'll pick it up and bring it to me, we will leave. I swear to God. God will y'all agree with me? I will go back to the hotel. Absolutely. If I, pick, if I take this flashlight and throw it in the hallway. And it gets thrown it, back? And you pick it up. No, don't throw it back. You pick it up. If you throw it back, I'm going to throw it right back at you. If you pick it up and bring it back to me, we will pack our sh** and leave. Like, quick. Dude. I'm jumping out the window. <laughs> Unfortunately, the flashlight never came back to me. Myself and Caleb went back to the command center to further analyze the flashlight video. Joe and Jacob took our place in the investigation. Alright. Mm. I'm gonna 
I'm gonna see the ball plays too. Get the big chair? Yeah. We all know what this is. Yeah. A female screen comes through the spirit box. What? Ooh, that was because Josh couldn't get the speaker hooked up in time, the scream is not as loud as it could be. What? Ooh. Here it is enhanced. Yeah. <laughs> Say that again. Josh gets a direct response. A voice comes through and says, Say what? Here is the enhanced version. Alright, well, grab the flashlight. Let's go over and accomplish it. Pick it up the recorder and walk him with it. I'm not going to cut the tape. Actually, I am. Cut the tape and head it out of the office. Yeah, that's where the supposed stairs used to be. Right here? Yeah, you can see the top of them. They're still there. No, yeah, they're not all the way down. I looked at the flashlight and I saw, like, a, it wasn't a flicker, you know, because the flickers were really bright. Cool. It was like a, say, like a glare off my watch went right over the top of the flashlight. Really? What? What? Right here, a class A male voice comes through the spirit box. This man says spirit, but the most compelling part about this is what none of the guys saw. What? what? At this moment, the exact same kind of bright ball we saw earlier downstairs appears in the hallway. The best part about this is that the voice and this light appear at the same exact time. And it rolled straight down the table and wouldn't fall. On the video, dude, it, it goes. Like, literally. Yeah, your, yeah slides. yours. Yeah, it sounds cliche. It, it feels dead in there. Back it up. The investigation of the Cypress Cafe has been one that we will never forget. We caught more than we had ever hoped to catch and made some new friends along the way. Hopefully, we'll be back to further our findings and add more credibility to what we already know is here. Till next time.